In this video, I want to test what's better, baking on a stone versus baking in a Dutch oven. Now I also added chapters to this video, that way you can skip ahead to the parts that interest you the most. Have fun and enjoy. I made two times exactly the same dough. And now I just want to change one parameter. Both the doughs are coming from the same dough and I divided them after the bulk fermentation stage. So they should be more or less exactly the same. This experiment is interesting because a stone is much cheaper than a Dutch oven like this. The Dutch oven I'm using is called the Challenger Bread Pan. I recently interviewed Jim, the mastermind behind it. He's called Jim Challenger. That's why it's called the Challenger Bread Pan. In case you're considering to buy one, feel free to use one of the affiliate links in the description of the video. Thank you for the support. I want to focus on oven spring, the crust, especially the crust from the top and the bottom. And me personally, because I like, I also want to check blisters on the crust. I know blisters is a debatable topic, but more on that later. What is your expectation? I'm very curious. What do you think is going to happen? Me personally, what I expect to happen is I expect there to be not a major difference. I'm not just going to be using a stone. I will also be placing another tray on top of the stone, but I'll show you my stingy German baking setup in a little bit. I expect the Dutch oven to have a little bit better crust from the bottom because the iron just releases the heat faster to the dough in comparison to the stone. That's also why when you're making a pizza in a home oven, a steel is typically better than a stone because your oven doesn't go that high in temperature. The Dutch oven is completely closed. And this is why a Dutch oven is amazing. Your homemade ovens are made to vent out all the steam, which is great typically, but for baking bread, that's really a disaster. You want to have a lot of steam to get that oven spring. Without steam, the Maillard reaction directly happens that gives you that typical amazing browning and amazing taste, but that closes the dough and that dough is no longer able to rise upwards. And this is where the Dutch ovens come in really handy. They are closed and all that steam that is created while your dough is baking is trapped inside. Some people even like to spritz the dough, which is what I like to do. And others like to place an ice cube in here just to give some additional steam. This is something that we don't have here when we're baking with a stone. But I got the cool little hack prepared that I want to show you. So we're pretty much tweaking our default stone here. Anyways, I'm going to start with a real quick recap on how I made the dough. And then we will start with the Dutch oven as the first candidate. I made a very large chunk of dough. In this case, it was for four loaves at the same time. I was making the dough overnight. The recipe itself has around 75% hydration, my standard recipe. For an overnight bread, it's very important that you add a lot of dough strength at the start, so you want to be doing a lot of kneading. I would then proceed and extract a small dough sample. This dough sample would tell me when the bulk fermentation is done. This depends on your flour. The more gluten, the longer you can ferment. For my flour, the sweet spot is between 75 to 100% size increase. Then, being the lazy me that I am, I slept in late. The dough at that point has been fermenting for around 10 hours overnight. I would do stretch and folds whenever I see the dough flattened out quite a lot. Once the dough sample reached the desired size increase, I would then proceed and divide and pre-shape plus shape the actual loaves. Just to have comparable results, I proof the doughs inside of the fridge. This way it doesn't matter that much if I bake one dough 30 minutes after the other. 
I really wanted to make sure that we just have this one tiny slight parameter change. But of course with sourdough it's always a little bit difficult. It might also be the shaping technique, it might be the scoring technique and so on. When presenting you the results I'll try my best to account for those factors. Okay, let's get started with dough number one. For baking, what I like to do these days is measure the temperature of the Dutch oven because whatever your oven suggests, it might not be correct. So I like to preheat my oven until my probe reaches around 230 degrees Celsius. And then I just leave it at that temperature for another 15 minutes or so. That way I make sure that my Dutch oven has the correct temperature. 230 degrees has shown to be the best temperature in my last experiments. So time to bake the first loaf. This loaf has actually been in the fridge for a little bit longer than 24 hours now. I simply didn't have the chance yet to bake it. And the pH has already be dropped below four. And this is the critical zone in my experience. And just check the loaf temperature. Oh. It's um, not that low. I would have hoped that it would have decreased even more. Anyways, I'm still hoping that we will get some good oven spring and that this one did not overproof. Let's see what's going to happen. Anyways, stay positive, right? And you always learn from your failures. And uh, let's see. Changing to upper and bottom heat from the fan and then as I said before it's 230 degrees Celsius and I'll be baking this for 30 minutes. Normally I do 25 but today 30 and you might be wondering why. Um, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I want to show you a cool hack but more on that in a little bit. Something that matches my stingy German nature. 30 minutes passed. Let's see what's hiding inside. <laughs> wow. Look at this amazing oven spring. I'm not gonna let this continue baking. I'll just be putting this to the side and now I will be preheating this stone. Oh, look at this. I'm so excited to test the stone to see whether we will get similar results. This bread looks perfect. Now I want to be simulating what's happening inside of the Dutch oven and for that I got a bowl here. It should be a bowl that can withstand fast temperature changes. So not a glass bowl. Clay works but metal would be even better. I'm going to be putting some pouring water right in there and that's going to create a lot of steam. Now we don't have a lid and those trays here on top, those cause an issue especially together with a fan. So the bread is gonna form a crust very, very fast. For that, I got a cool hack. I'm gonna prepare another tray just right there. And that tray is going to block all the heat from the top. Plus, it's going to catch some of that steam. I think this is a really, really good hack. In the past, it has worked amazing, but I never compared it directly to my Dutch oven. So let's see what's going to happen. Okay, the stone is also almost ready, but I would say for the stone, 230 degrees Celsius is not the same as for the Dutch oven, 230 degrees Celsius. That's because the stone does not release its heat as fast to the dough as the Dutch oven does. Metal just releases heat faster to the actual products, but I don't know how to fully calculate that. So I guess I'll just be going with this for now, but this is something to also keep in mind. I'm very excited to see whether we are gonna get the same results because this one just turned out perfect. I know this is a little bit crazy, but I like to take up a stone like this and load the loaf. So I'm just gonna flip this over now. That's what I don't like too much. Did you hear that flop? That's degassing the dough just a little bit. Time to score this as well. 
scoring looks great. Let's spritz this. Just note how the water is also evaporating less here from the stone. Placing the second tray. And this is where the dough will sit. And now time to place the water in the bowl at the bottom. Same settings, upper bottom heat and 230 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Half time, looking amazing as well. Ah no, it's stuck to the stone. Damn. Ah, I don't want to see this, this is gonna hurt. Oh, not as bad as I thought. <laughs> And voila, I didn't finish baking them yet because it was a little late yesterday evening and I'm gonna finish baking them right now. This is actually a cool little hack that I like to do and that's why I wanted to show you this as well. I like to bake my bread just for the half time with a lot of steam so there's not that much of a crust yet. Then I put this into an airtight bag and just place this in my fridge for a few days and I can have fresh bread whenever I want. This is especially amazing, for instance, if you want to have breakfast or so, then you just take one of those, put them in your oven and finish letting them bake until you have all those delicious colors, that nice crust. This really makes it very simple to also plan ahead. Let's say you have a dinner party or so and you want to bring a fresh loaf, but that day you might not have time. Well, then this is something that you want to do as well. Let's just do already a quick pre preliminary check on the different breads and then see how they look like after the bake. One thing that I noticed is that this bread seems to have risen upwards a little bit more compared to this bread. But that could also simply have been my shaping technique. So I don't think we can put that much focus on this. I would say this one opened up a little bit better, but then it's also, I think, marginal. Um, it could also have been my scoring technique, so I also don't want to put too much of an emphasis on that. What we can check is, we can check some of the bubbles here on the side, some of the blisters. And we do have quite a few blisters on the one which we just baked on the stone. So we have as well on the one which we baked inside of the Dutch oven. There might be a few more, but it's also just a marginal difference. One thing that's super important is the consistency of the sourdough bread. And for this, I always like to have that ear because it just gives you so much additional flavor. The blisters, I feel, just add an extra level of crispness. And they just make your consistency even better. That paired with a fluffy, somewhat moist crumb is the perfect sourdough to me. And you also want your bread to be relatively crisp at the bottom. And this is what I'm most scared about with the stone because the stone is not able to release the heat as fast. So here, if I check this, it doesn't sound so dull. And just by touching it, I feel that this is not done with baking yet. And just compare this. This is already a nice crust from the bottom here on the one that we baked in the Dutch oven. So this one right now has a better consistency from the bottom than this one. If I were to just letting this finish bake on the stone, yep, probably this one is gonna win in terms of consistency from the bottom. However, I'm gonna do a small hack now. I'm gonna let both of them finish baking at the same time, but I'll not be letting them finish bake on a stone. I'll be just be using a rack like this in the oven. And this is also pretty cool because this way I'm going to save some energy. Stingy German, you know, we don't like to spend a lot of money. Yeah, typical uh, German. So I'm going to let both of them finish bake at the same time. And I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with all this bread. Very excited to see the final results. So far, I would say both of them are around the same. No clear winner yet. And for that, I'm just going to be using the fan and to around 200 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to closely look until I see that the bread has the color that I like. It's looking beautiful in here.
And here we are with the two final breads, baked in a Dutch oven and baked on the stone. And both of them look amazing. And now both of them have a similarly good crust. Oh. <laughs> and same here. So I'm very happy with how they turned out. Because of the crust, and now look at this amazing coloring, they're also gonna be very similar in terms of taste. They're coming from the same dough. So yeah, by applying this trick of just baking it later, baking both of them together on a rack, I think both of them, yeah, in terms of consistency, <laughs> they are now more or less the same. So pro Dutch oven, it's a little bit easier to handle, I would say. You don't need another tray on top. You don't need to heat another bowl of water. It's just easier, it's more comfortable with a Dutch oven. Looking at the stone, it's definitely cheaper. You might already have a stone for pizza making or so, so that's gonna make baking very, very easy. If I were to bake a loaf daily, I would probably go for the Dutch oven. However, one disadvantage of the Dutch oven here is also that I can't place two loaves in it at the same time. That's where also the stone would win. I would be able to place two loaves right next to each other. That would save definitely on the energy bill. I can't say the winner because both tools do their job. So it's a matter of preference what you personally prefer. I just wanted to show you that you don't have to invest in expensive tools. You can just use a pretty cheap home oven setup and then you'll have similar results. And that's what's very important to me. I like to enable everyone to bake bread without buying expensive tools. And one last note, I was really surprised here, especially on the blisters, how many blisters we even got here on the loaf that we baked on the stone. Almost as many as the one which we baked inside of the Dutch oven. Quite an awesome experiment and it was a lot of fun to do this. Plus, big thank you for suggesting this. Thank you everybody who is always participating on the votes. That just makes this channel so much more interactive. And please, I would be very curious to hear your thoughts on the experiment, what you prefer. And please also do suggest further experiments that I should conduct in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this experiment, that you learned something new and may the gluten be with you.